preview was brought to you by The Ding Stinger. For more information, please visit thedingstinger.com and take the sting out of estimating dings. And what we're going into now is a intermediate hail repair. So here is a shot of the roof that we're gonna be working on today. Along with the hood. Got a big one back here. And you'll see that a lot when doing this type of uh, hail repair. You've actually, what we have here is two dents connected together. Take a look across here. We're gonna be getting into the hood and this has uh, quite a bit of side panel damage as well. I want you to take note here, the tool, the rod that I'm using to go through this roof is a pretty sharp one. But what I want you to do is get used to what you feel comfortable with. Uh, these sharp rods have an advantage, but they're harder to learn. I mean, it takes precise pushing to use these very, very sharp rods. This is to the point to where when I touch it, it feels like a needle at the tip of the, the tip of the rod. And it's going to give me the leverage. I am basically going to use this throughout the entire roof. Anything that's not under a brace, I'm going to use this tool. Uh, I'd encourage you to learn how to use sharp tips. In my opinion, you can be very, very accurate with these, and it'll also kind of prime you when you get to the point where we're going to be going into shrinking large oil can style dents. In my opinion, this is paramount for that process. So if this is something that you're not used to, just take it step by step, uh, watch some of our videos about using a sharp tip, and begin practicing. Just like anything else, I mean, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And in my opinion, when you learn how to use these things correctly, you can uh, increase your speed, increase your accuracy, and with that, you will make more money. And that's ultimately, at the end of the day, that's why we're all here. And we're going to start with the front of the roof and work my way through the damage. So I'm going to make strategic pushes on the center of these dents. A lot of times I look at every one of these dents and I think I'm going to knock this out to about a 80 to 95 percent level. I'm going to keep on moving. Because again, we're going to come through and we're going to have to cross check all of this work. And because we're on a roof, it doesn't mean we do not have to cross check. So each and every, each and every little dent that you see here is going to have to be looked at from a couple different angles. But as you can see, little by little, I'm going to run through the side of this roof. All right, everybody. So here is that the largest dent on this vehicle. As you can see, it's not just one dent. It has one or maybe two right there to the rear and then the largest one right here ahead of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin it with a nice close fog. See how I can see the interior and the bottom of that rear dent and I can see the bottom of this dent as well. Stand right here, see that line right there? That's the bottom. So that's where I'm gonna gain my pushes. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. I'm gonna concentrate them pushes in the bottom of the dent. And as soon as I get it up about 30 to 40%, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this light off and finish it with this one that's further back. You wanna be careful, you don't wanna to get too comfortable. Continue pushing in this because it's not gonna show you the entire panel. It's gonna shine down into the center. It's gonna allow you to bring up the center. But as far as giving you an overall view of the entire area, it's a little too close for that. So I'm actually going in here with the smaller pink handle whale tail. I'm going to start off back here behind it until I get the damage back here about 70% removed. It's basically, it's, it's taking the uh, low the two smaller lows over here and taking it off the shoulder of the larger dent. Now, time to go in here 
to the larger dent.